appreciate the music. It's great this morning. It's great to see all of you. And talking about a friend of transportation reminded me earlier this morning as I was driving over to the office pretty early and driving up 15th Street, I had remembered back to probably last year sometime I was driving during the campaign trail. As you know, many of you know, Texas is a really big place. So if you ever think about running for office statewide, think about it two and three and four times because you are going to be on the road a tremendous amount. And one day I was on the road, it was late in the afternoon, and actually former executive director Phil Wilson gave me a call to return a call for a question that I had on the transportation project in the Senate district that I represented at the time. And Phil said, Senator, do you have a moment to visit? And I said, yeah, actually, I've got about two hours. And he said, oh, you're driving through middle Texas somewhere. And I said, no, I'm sitting in traffic on I-10. <laughs> and Phil said, can I call you back in a little bit? And I said, no, now's a really good time to talk about transportation. So, uh, you know, Texas, it's amazing if you look at this state over the course of the last several years about the growth and what it's done to our infrastructure and our transportation, and we all know that. And so, therefore, it's important to make sure that we continue to fund transportation. As you know, last week, I announced the biennial revenue estimate, which provides lawmakers with the amount of money that they will have to appropriate in the upcoming session. And if you don't mind, I'll take just a couple minutes to run through some of those numbers for you, because some of you may have seen a little bit in the newspaper and the media what those numbers were, but let me break them down for you real quick if you don't mind. Revenue available for general purpose spending in the 2016-17 biennium is $113 billion. Now, in part, we start with $7.5 billion at the end of August that will be a carryover from last session, last biennium that we're currently in, we're finishing up at the end of August, and rolls over into the new biennium. We estimate the general revenue collections for the new biennium will be $110.4 billion. Now, you also have to keep in mind that $5 billion will have to be set aside for transfers into the rainy day fund, as well as into Fund 6, as we as the legislature approved last session, as well as voters approved in the last constitutional amendment. You also might remember that in last year, there was a transfer of $1.7 billion out of the rainy day fund into Fund 6. And if you take into account, I said it's $5 billion and half is going to one and half is going to other, we project that those numbers will decrease to roughly about 1.3 and 1.2 billion each year as a transfer from the rainy day fund over into fund six. And so therefore the result is $113 billion, Cindy, that we have announced that the legislature has for general purpose spending. Now that does not obviously take into account federal dollars and other dollars as well as dedicated streams of revenue from taxes here in the state of Texas that the legislature doesn't have a whole lot of discretion over. Economy. There's a lot of discussion about the economy here in the state of Texas and around the world as we look at oil prices recently. I expect that we will have a robust growth that we have enjoyed in the last recent years will moderate, but we'll continue to have expansion here in the state of Texas. Texas recovered from the recession of 2008 and 2009. We returned to very strong growth which was very good for Texas, very good for the country, because we were leading the country in that growth since that time of the recession. And you can actually see that Texas growth outpaced all the larger states in our nation. Actually, if you want to take all the growth that Texas had since that last recession, we've seen 1.2 million jobs created in Texas during that time period. Significant growth compared to the rest of the nation. This was in part attributed to what? The oil boom significant infusions of dollars into the state of Texas, growth in Texas in part because of that. It also helped offset other sectors of the state economy during that shell boom. As you know, you've probably seen, uh, let's say I'll give you an example myself, coming into my new role, my wife and I, there was one campaign pledge that I made, that whether we win, lose, whatever happened, I'm going to take my wife on a very nice vacation. As the parents of a six-year-old daughter, a six-year-old son, and a nine-year-old daughter, and as a husband who was gone all the time traveling the great state of Texas, I figured I owed my wife that much. So while we were on vacation in December, after about the third morning, she knew I got up early, I was sitting over in the corner reading quite a bit, 
And every, about the third morning she finally got in and she said, okay, so what did oil prices do today? <laughs> because every morning I would be up and emailing back and forth with my revenue estimator, just trying to forecast how we figure out for the BRE to give the most accurate revenue estimate we can to the state legislature. As a former legislator, I know that having accuracy in that revenue estimate is really important. Now, I do have one quick question for you talking about that real quick. Could I have a show of hands, anyone in this room, and it's a little bright, so I need your hands raised really, really high because it's a little bright up here for me to look out. But if you know how much money is going to be in your personal checkbook at your house, not your business, but in your own personal household, starting in September of this year, and going for the next two years, could you tell me to the penny how much money you're going to have in your personal checkbook at the end of two years and nine months? If so, could I see a show of hands of anybody in this room? I've got one over here. You're part of my new revenue estimating team. In part, I say that because we have to take our job very, very seriously to give the legislature that number, but in particular with all prices. For fiscal year 2015, which is the continuation of this year that ends in August, the average price that we put in the biennial revenue estimate is $64. I've had several legislators tell me over the course of the several weeks that Glenn, that is just way too high. Have you not noticed that all prices are in the high 40s? And you told us it's $64. I said, well, thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. We've had five months of $80. Five months have already been put in the bank. So therefore, if we have seven months, which is left in the calendar year for the rest of this biennium till the end of August, we roughly need $52. So therefore, that's how we come out to, if you take the average, and I feel there's gonna be lowers. I don't necessarily say we found the bottom of it, but I feel like we're pretty confident with that $64. Going forward into the next year, the first year of the biennium, I estimated $64. And in the following year, the last year, we estimated $69. A buddy of mine yesterday had texted me, who is in the oil trading business, and said, could you tell me how you came up with your numbers? And I explained to him as best I could in 140 characters of a text, which doesn't fit in 140 characters, by the way. But I also texted him after that again, and I said, oh, it's, it's half science and half magic. And in part, that's the reason I'm going to talk to you about me and my, one of my revenue estimating team, the one hand that was over here. We strive to provide the most accurate number we can for the legislature. But with that being said, two years and nine months is a very long time. Fortunately, we have a very diverse economy here in Texas. In addition, the strength to a broad economy, we have construction industry, professional services, business services that will benefit from the lower prices and old prices that we're seeing. I have said before, and I stand by the number, that if you look at, if you have average prices about what we have today, and if they continue ebb and flow up and down in a given year and in a given few years, that's a pay increase to your average employees. That's a pay increase to the average person. And they're going to put those dollars into the economy. So therefore, we forecast a moderate increase in growth here in Texas. And it's more moderate because of the lower oil prices when you will see other sectors of the economy continue to do well. In fact, in the first week that I was in Austin, or in office, as I had announced Monday with the biannual revenue estimate, that in the first week alone, there were 5,000, 4,000 new jobs in the first week here in Texas, in seven days, and there's been 5,000 in the second week, which goes to show that people still want to move to Texas because Texas has a strong economy. One of the things that I pointed out during the revenue estimate on Monday, and I will continue to talk about, is the volatility in both sales taxes as well as oil and gas severance taxes in Texas in the last 10 years. If you look at the prior 10 years, as in the last 10 years of the last century, 1991 to roughly 2000, if you look at those 10 years, you will see that oil prices were much lower, but they were stable. If you look at sales taxes, they ticked up every single year. They either went up 4%, they went up 10%, but they went up every single year. Now, if you look at the first 10 years of this century, 2001 to 2011, you will see significant swings up and down in 
both of those. It's kind of a new trend, it seems as though, that Texas is in. And why is it important to point out sales tax and oil, sell, oil tax volatility? The reason being is because they're 60% of that $113 billion. And the reason I point that out is it's something to continue to be cautious about. And every single morning when I wake up and my team wakes up, we will continue to monitor this economy. And as we have better information, if the numbers change up or down, we're going to be the first to tell the legislature. We're going to be the first to tell you the taxpayers. And we're going to be the first to tell the press so they can be able to notify you that. So the volatility is something that we need to continue to monitor. State Highway Fund. Anybody in here? I don't need to show the hands. By the way, anybody in here has an interest in the State Highway Fund? We estimate that a total amount of $30 billion will be allocated to the highway fund in the upcoming biennium. Obviously, you know as well as anyone that there's a number of sources that contribute to that, whether it's motor vehicle registration fees, motor fuel taxes, which we estimate will moderately increase over the next biennium, and then severance taxes, the new source of revenue from the voters approved constitutional amendment of last year. In 2015, as I mentioned, we had the $1.7 billion transfer from the highway, from the rainy day fund to the highway fund, and we project that that number is going down. I continue to talk about those dollars. I voted for that constitutional amendment as a state senator. I voted for that constitutional amendment as a taxpayer at the ballot box. I think that it was important for us to put dollars into transportation and Senator Nichols came up with a creative way to try to get an infusion. Does that solve the problems that we have? As I sat and talked to Phil on my, cell, on my phone and waited in traffic in I-10, no, it doesn't solve all those problems. Does it solve all those problems that we had from the shell oil boom and take one of the counties that I represented in the state Senate, DeWitt County? And by the way, that's the Eagleford Shell. A lot of road infrastructure needs in those communities and throughout the state. It doesn't solve all those. And one of the things that I continue to talk about is that those dollars that are transferred into the highway fund, whether it's the 1.7 billion of last year or my projections of 1.2 and 1.3 over the course of the next two years, it's a bonus check. It's not a guaranteed stream of revenue that you can rely on for the volatility of the last two years. Is it additional? Is it important? Absolutely. But we just have to always make sure that we are still need to continue to strive to have a reliable funding source to solve our transportation needs. We still have 500 people on average move to Texas more than move away from Texas every single day. So those transportation needs will continue to exist. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for all that you do. It's good to see you, and may God bless you and through you, and God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you very much.